Welcome back, everybody. I wanted to make a quick video discussing the difference between an accelerometer and a gyroscope. The sensors, there's two of the sensors that your flight controller board in your quad has. Yeah, and, and kind of what they do and what the difference is. Uh, I've got my chameleon hooked up here. Hopefully you can see him over here. And the first cool thing when you ever get into beta flight, you say, wow, you, you can you can move your quad around and you see it represented there. So it obviously has some sensors that make that happen. In this case, it's just like your phone has if you've ever played any of those games that rely on the way you move the phone or if you shake your phone to have something happen, that kind of thing. It's the same, it's the same sensors uh, that are in there. So it's, it's in this case, it's seeking gravity. So this... This depiction here is dependent on the accelerometer. Let's talk about that a little bit. You can go to the sensors page and kind of see what's going on. And I encourage you to do this with your quad just to, as an experiment. If you have your gyroscope in your accelerometer, I don't think you can disable the gyroscope, but you can disable the, the accelerometer. If you have your accelerometer enabled, you can see both of these screens here. We have um, one graph representing the gyroscope sensor we have another graph representing the accelerometer within each of these is uh, a representation in three different colors of the three axes uh, that they're able to sense in the case of the gyroscope x is sensing movement along the roll axis which is about the longitudinal axis y is sensing what we call pitch it's movement along the longitudinal axis and about the lateral axis. Z is sensing what we call yaw, which is movement about the vertical axis. So knowing that, if I was to take this and move it, for instance, on the roll axis, you're going to see changes on the X parameter, which is representing roll here. If I move it along, if I change the pitch, you'll see the gyros re uh, reacting to that movement. If you see me turn it about the yaw axis, you'll see that movement there too. Now, this sensor only measures rate of change. So if well, no matter what position I put this in, if I leave it there, uh, all the sensors go flat, meaning that it's not changing its orientation. If I start changing its orientation, you start you start seeing uh, you start seeing that now in the meantime you've probably been watching the accelerometer and you can see that it's doing that when the when the uh, sensors are at rest you're going to get uh, a combination of readings here but they're not necessarily going to be zero it's reading right now uh, zero on the y and x or the x and y axis and it's reading one on the z-axis. That's because uh, when we live on Earth, we have gravity. And this scale is in g's, which one gravity, which means when you're just sitting on the Earth, you're experiencing one g of acceleration force due to gravity. And that's what the uh, sensor there is representing too and, and uh, responding to. So if I turn this and put it, say, on its butt here, you can see now that one of the different sensors, in this case the x-axis axis sensor, is uh, responding to the 1G, where now the z-axis is, uh, is not. Same thing if I put it on its side, we should see the, uh, the y-axis is representing 1. If you go to the other side, you'll find that it represents negative 1, saying that it's upside down in relationship to its uh, position on Earth. So any particular position that we put it on you can see here that I have it kind of on one corner and then it's not representing one on any axis but if you were to add all those up you'd find that uh, the total representation is going to be one so it's, it's a way that you can seek where gravity is Assuming that the accelerometer is not moving in space, it does a really good job of that, and you can always tell where down is. When you start moving around, 
and you're a free body in space, it doesn't necessarily work that way because of acceleration forces coming from other places like motion. But that's it's able to make use of the gyroscope and the accelerometer to, to uh, try to determine that. Now usually, uh, if you're flying acro mode, you're probably not making use of the accelerator or accelerometer anyway. So this is typically used in horizon mode. When you let go, it knows how to seek level again. It also uh, is used in uh, angle mode where it only allows you a few degrees of movement from, from level. Once you turn that off, you're probably just using the gyroscopes anyway. So, And that's how the uh, PID loops, that's what the PID loops rely on. It sees how you're moving and it, uh, and it reacts based on what your input is. It, it measures what's actually happening and that's what, that's, that's what programming your PID loops does is it makes that do it in a smooth way and in a predictable way. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, it may have been a little bit more in-depth than you care, but uh, I'm going to put it out there anyway. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's any su other subjects you'd like me to tackle, uh, on, on the, especially on the tech part of these uh, fun little toys. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.